Something extraordinary is stirring on Mars. Perseverance has uncovered strange spider egg rock formations, clusters that defy expectations and hint at curious, unearthly processes. Meanwhile, InSight's seismic sensors are picking up Marsquakes and whispering secrets of hidden water reservoirs far beneath the surface. These recent revelations are more than anomalies. They are gentle nudges from a planet that still harbors mysteries. Mars is not a barren desert. It's a world quietly breathing enigmas, calling us to question what we think we know. As our machines tap down upon its red soil, the planet ripples with possibility. We are standing at the verge of something profound, the threshold of human presence on another world. Today, this isn't just a technological expedition. It is a voyage of cosmic introspection, of deepened connection, and of daring curiosity. Welcome to Infinite Mind. Mars has long captivated humanity's imagination. Ancient civilizations revered that rust-colored glow as a symbol in the sky. Now, modern science offers far richer motives. Mars once hosted rivers, lakes, and perhaps even oceans. Evidence lies in sprawling valley networks and sedimentary deposits. Permafrost at the poles and subterranean lakes detected by radar evoke images of frozen time capsules. Potential havens where life might have once thrived or perhaps still persists. If we find microbial fossils or living organisms, it will answer one of science's most profound questions. Whether life is a universal cosmic phenomenon or an isolated earthly accident, Mars offers that proof of concept. But beyond life, Mars brims with resources. Its polar ice can be converted into drinking water, breathable air, and even rocket propellant. Its regolith can be processed into bricks for shelters. Its carbon dioxide atmosphere is a chemical feedstock. Such in situ resource utilization transforms Mars from a mere destination into a long-term habitat. If humans are to plant roots beyond Earth, Mars is the most practical launch pad. More than utility, Mars carries emotional and cultural weight. It's a blank canvas for our hopes, a mirror reflecting our stories of resilience, pioneering spirit, and cosmic aspiration. Ray Bradbury's The Martian Chronicles imagined settlers carving a new life among Martian dunes. Blockbusters and novels dramatize Mars as the next frontier where humanity seeks meaning in the void. And Mars doesn't surrender without demanding humility. Every landing implies risk. Every drill excavation contests gravity, dust, and silence. Yet it is precisely that tension between hubris and humility that makes Mars an ethical crucible for human exploration. Finally, Mars is our test for the cosmos. If we can live there, harvesting atmosphere, growing food, surviving isolation, then we have built a blueprint for interstellar survival. It is a cosmic initiation. To walk on Mars is to say we can go farther. It's less a conquest and more a rehearsal a spiritual primer for humanity's role among the stars. Making Mars our new frontier requires engineering breakthroughs, not just ambition. The void between planets is vast and demands faster, safer transport. Enter Next Generation Propulsion, SpaceX's Starship, with its fully reusable architecture and methane oxygen engines, offers the promise of dramatically reduced launch cost and interplanetary transfer time. Meanwhile, NASA is researching nuclear thermal propulsion, NTP, a technology that could double rocket efficiency by heating propellant with nuclear reactors. NTP, though decades from flight readiness, hints at crisper trajectories and faster Mars voyages, cutting transit time from months to weeks. But getting there is only half the story. Life support systems must be airtight, regenerative, and incredibly reliable. On Earth, we waste water. On Mars, you cannot. Thus, closed-loop ecosystems, machines that purify water, recycle air, and sustain plants, 
must function flawlessly. Biosphere-inspired growth chambers emulate ecosystems within a confined habitat, closing nitrogen and carbon cycles with microbial aid. One futuristic dream, bioregenerative agriculture, dozens of plants converting CO2 to O2, generating edible magnolia-sized yields. In this context, Mars becomes a sophisticated vertical farm, an oasis of nutrients, biomass, and hope. Parallel to life support, robotics must assume new roles. Before humans set foot, autonomous robots will traverse dangerous terrains, build landing pads, drill test cores, and erect landing hangars. Imagine rovers with 3D printers coaxing out structural parts from Martian dust. Picture drones mapping ravines through artificial gusts of Martian wind. AI-driven systems could survey geology, detect subsurface ice, even self-repair. By the time humans arrive, much of the planetary infrastructure might already exist. What if we flipped the order? Could robots terraform ahead of us? Picture melting permafrost to thicken clouds or seeding algae to produce oxygen. Though still speculative, these early biological or chemical transformations challenge our perception of what preparation means. Mars might not wait for us. It may be remade in piecemeal whispers by robotic pioneers before human feet ever tamp its soil. Mars is not kind to life as we know it. With daytime highs reaching 20 degrees Celsius and nighttime lows plunging below minus 100 degrees Celsius, the temperature swings are extreme. Its atmosphere, just 1% as thick as Earth's, offers no protection from ultraviolet radiation or cosmic rays. Dust storms can blanket the entire planet for months, darkening skies and fouling solar panels. Liquid water can only exist in briny or transient states. To survive, humans will require habitats as sealed as submarines, shielded from radiation via regolith-based walls or water-filled bladders. Antimicrobial filters will scrub biological toxins. Emergency shelters must stand ready. Engineering those shelters is itself a puzzle. They must maintain Earth-like atmospheric pressure, recycle waste, power themselves, and resist abrasion from dust. NASA is testing inflatable modules covered with layers of regolith. Martian bricks might be 3D printed on site, giving us natural insulation while reducing transport burden. Hidden challenges lurk in the details, joints that seal without grinding to dust, valves that do not seize in cold, steel alloys resistant to embrittlement in cyclic temperature extremes, even a routine EVA, walking outside in a pressurized suit, requires mechanical precision reduced to reassuring simplicity. Food and oxygen extend beyond life support. They shape a civilization. Farms must grow in near-autonomous systems, hydroponics or aeroponics yielding greens and vegetables, while algae or cyanobacteria help process waste into fertilizer or oxygen. Temporary ecological mimicry, a closed cycle lab, may eventually give way to Martian agroecospheres, blending human needs with autotrophic autonomy. Isolation on Mars is profound. A crew may be a dozen individuals in a habitat the size of a suburban home, with no chance for new arrivals and six to eight months in communication delay with Earth. Psychological stress becomes a battleground. Crews will need purpose, routine, Connection. VR pods can simulate Earth forests, daily messages where loved ones speak through time delay and group rituals. What if these challenges reshape us? People born in Martian habitats, called Martians by Earth-born observers, could have distinct physiology, slightly higher lung volume, denser bone, different circadian adaptation, they may craft new philosophical constructs. Will they still identify as Earthlings or have they become Martians first? Mars is no longer solely NASA's mission. A new era, public, private, international, is unfolding. SpaceX leads with Starship, 
pushing boundaries with reusable hardware and human-rated vehicles. Meanwhile, ESA plans the Rosalind Franklin rover, designed to drill deep enough to reach water-altered clay. China's Tianwen-3 mission intends to return Martian material to Earth labs, opening doors to unprecedented science. Collaborations like the Mars Sample Return, MSR, mission Unite NASA and ESA in multinational coordination, a testament to shared pursuit beyond borders. What if these players move beyond national or corporate tendency and truly collaborate? With shared data, shared landing zones, shared harvests of scientific returns. Imagine ESA's instruments packaged aboard SpaceX's Starship to piggyback a mission. Imagine Chinese-sourced samples analyzed in U.S. and European labs, but done under scientific transparency and cosmic mutualism. Mars exploration could set a model of peaceful competition primed for shared triumph. The GPS imprint of Mars exploration will reverberate through space science, breakthroughs in planetary protection, remote tools for astrobiology. The technological bridge we build to Mars isn't just about surviving. It's a portal, a statement. We will go outward. So who are we striving for Mars? We are story makers and starlighters. Humans tethered to Earth, yes, but destined to write chapters among the suns. Mars is not just a landscape. It is an ethic and a symbol. It reminds us of Earth's fragility, the grandeur of cosmic distance, and the audacity that dwells within us. On Mars, we will ask deep questions. What makes us human? What does survival mean when stretched beyond Earth's nurturing touch? We may grapple with discovering microbial life or fail to do so. Both outcomes will shape humanity's self-conception. Mars may gift us a biology twist or amplify Earth's rarity. Either way, it lifts the veil. But perhaps the grandest what if remains. What if human beings live across worlds, Earth and Mars, each defining and inspiring the other? Children born in Martian habitats, walking beneath dusty skies of sunset ochre, could look back at Earth as mythic home. Meanwhile, Earth will look upward toward Mars as aspirational generational venture. Mars is no longer optional, it is inevitable. Mars holds the challenge. Not just can we go there, but what kind of life we will live when we do.